I'm Alina Howder, and here's a look at today's top stories. A number of holiday travelers found themselves on epic journeys with last-minute flight changes. From Friday to Sunday, more than 3,000 flights were canceled across the U.S. United Airlines said the nationwide spike in Omicron cases this week has had a direct impact on our flight crews and the people who run our operation. The best thing to do if you're traveling this week, and especially if you're flying, is to sign up for text alerts so that you can stay on top of any potential changes. In the U.S., COVID daily cases have spiked to more than 176,000 people. That's the highest rate in nearly a year. Across the world, COVID restrictions have gotten stricter. A five-day lockdown in the Chinese city of Xi'an is now in place. Only one person per household can leave for supplies every couple of days. At a hospital in Israel, a test group of 150 medical staff received a fourth dose of the coronavirus vaccine. And Germany will soon be imposing new restrictions on gathering sizes and closing nightclubs ahead of New Year's Eve. Ed joins us with the forecast. Ed, how's it going? Very cold temperatures across the state, Alina, and it's going to stay that way throughout the week. Temperatures anywhere from the teens below to the teens above zero across Montana. And some areas in southwest Montana, perhaps upper teens to low 20s. Snow showers in the, some of the higher elevations of western Montana and also southern Montana along northern Wyoming tonight heading into tomorrow. And all these shaded areas, we have wind chill warnings and wind chill advisories into effect early tomorrow. Temperatures in the 20s below zero across the north northern tier of the state early in the day tomorrow with additional wind chills. We'll take a little bit of the edge off the temperatures by tomorrow afternoon. A few snow showers, those blue arrows indicating some colder winds pushing off the mountains. School districts all across Montana are dealing with a bus driver shortage. That's forced the Laurel Public School District to make a difficult decision, going from 12 bus routes to six. This decision is stressing parents out, and now they're not sure how to get their kids to and from school. A bus driver shortage is affecting all of Montana, but in the Laurel Public School District, it's becoming a crisis. We're down to five drivers. So five drivers to run, run 12 routes, plus the special ed, plus the two Yellowstone Academy. We just can't do it. Because of the lack of drivers, the district has had to combine bus routes. Districts are required to pick up kids who live three or more miles away from schools. That won't change, but starting January 4th, kids who live less than three miles away will have to find a new way to get to and from school. It's really frustrating. Andrea Albers is a working mom with three kids that ride the bus. By the time I got to go to work, my kids don't have a way to get to school. Her husband is a pilot, often out of town for work, so getting the kids to and from school is her responsibility. My family lives in Billings, so in order for help from them, I have to bring them in from Billings to take my kids to school. So, so that's kind of a pain in the butt. Parents like Mindy Bosch are also frustrated with the timing of the announcement. Absolute panic because I don't know how I'm going to trying to work schedules out. Mindy and her husband both work long hours at the refinery. They will not be sending their kids to school on days they have to work if there's not a safe option to get them there. We have a little girl that lives just down from us and hers was canceled. Um, her bus route was canceled as well. She lives on Highway 10, so she'll have to walk the entire way to school on Highway 10. But the district's hands are tied. This is not anything we wanted to do. We're simply forced to do it because we, we can't transport. There's not enough room on the buses. They're looking at solutions, offering stipends to bus drivers to alleviate the shortage. We've looked at purchasing um, 10 passenger vans so that we can use those on, on some of these routes. But parents are now in limbo, wondering what they'll do when the spring semester begins. These are not safe solutions. They're not safe solutions. And, and while some of the people around here do have the ability to have other people pick up their kids, there's a lot of families that don't have that. In Laurel, Alina Howder, MTN News. Identity theft is certainly not something that you keep at the top of your mind every single day, but it can wreak havoc in your life if it goes unnoticed. Well, one Billings family is crediting the simple act of getting to know your neighbors for helping stop some mail theft that could have led to stolen identities. I feel like in our neighborhood, the neighbors kind of are watching out of who's driving around and who's stopping and what people look like and know them. So I got lucky. 
Just one month after the Mahler family moved into their Billings West End home, two women drove to their mailbox in broad daylight on a Sunday, pulled out the envelopes, and started taking photos. Luckily, Jason Judice, who lives across the street, saw the unfamiliar people and went out to confront them, and they spun him a lie about how they used to live here. I guess the alarming part for me was just how confident and how calm she was, and just very serious and, you know, very, very almost convincing. If, if I didn't know my neighbors and didn't know the prior neighbors, you know, it might have been a believable story. During the holiday season, male thieves are looking for cash and gift cards, but Mahler considers herself lucky. I think it turned out better than it could have because he was able to get them to put the mail back in the box. They didn't get the mail because they would have gotten our titles of our cars, um, which would have been scary. Even though the thieves got away with photos of the mail, the Mahler family is still upgrading their security. They bought a robust mailbox that has to be opened with a key and bought identity theft insurance for their bank accounts. Another thing you can do to protect yourself is try and meet your incoming mail at the box, leaving little opportunity for theft. And outgoing mail should be taken right to the post office or a blue pickup box. We don't want people to put, put mail in their mailbox overnight with the red flag up waiting for the carrier to pick it up in the morning because you know, we want to take the opportunity out of the crime. So we ask people, if you can, if you're going to take your raw mail to be mailed, take it to the post office or take it to a blue collection bin somewhere in town. Don't leave it in your mailbox overnight because that's just not a safe practice. On a regional level, the Postal Service has not seen an uptick year to year in mail theft reports. But thieves are generally out more when there are lucrative things like Christmas gifts being sent in the post. So there you go. Go introduce yourself to your neighbors. Maybe go bake them a plate of Christmas cookies and bring it over this holiday season. It might just help stop some crime in your neighborhood. Reporting in Billings, Mitch Laggy, MTN News.